Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean Martin Comedy Hour presents a special one-hour roast with tonight's guests, Dan Rowan and Dick Martin, Gene Kelly, Joey Bishop, John Rickles, Robert Wood, president of CBS Television. Mike Connors. Red Fox. Marty Allen. Cass Elliott. Nipsey Russell. Norm Crosby. And your Roastmaster, Dean Martin. And tonight's very special man of the week, Carol O'Connor. Also appearing on tonight's special roast, Foster Book, Ruth Buzzy, William Conrad. John John Gabor, Senator Barry Goldwater, William Holden, Mayor John Lindsay, Donald O'Connor, Charles Nelson Riley. We had two disappointments tonight. Bob Hope couldn't make it, and Carol O'Connor could. <laughs> we always try to get names for an evening like this, and as soon as we announced we were honoring Carol O'Connor, the names started pouring in. They called him every name in the book. <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not saying Carol was unpopular. All I know is when he moved into Beverly Hills, five colored families moved out. <laughs> but in spite of his image, this man is all heart. Every summer, he goes into the ghetto, picks out the poorest family, takes him to a meadow in the country and leaves him there. <laughs> and at Christmas time, he's been known to bring a group of poor black kids into his house to serve the turkey and wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> what mileage this man's gotten out of all in the family? <laughs> he goes right on. He... <laughs> he's got an Archie Bunker. I don't wait, I only got an hour. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, he's got Archie Bunker T-shirts, Archie Bunker lunch boxes, records. And now he's opening a chain of restaurants serving bigot burgers. <laughs> Let's face it, there's only one Carol O'Connor, and that's Jackie Gleason. <laughs> Dan Rowan and Dick Martin are two beautiful guys. They've been together a long time. As a matter of fact, it was 25 years ago today that they teamed up and got their first laugh. Tonight, they'll be trying for their second one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm glad who was that strange man? Who, who was that masked man? No. I don't know who I he was. Uh, Listen, we're yes. very happy to be here to pay tribute Indeed. to the star of All in the Family. Indeed we are. Yes. He's a big star, too. Carol O'Connor. Carol O'Connor is a sure big star. He's one of the biggest stars on television. No, how did you know that? I asked him, and he told me. He, he told me. <laughs> is setting such records, it is probably the biggest show the TV industry has ever seen. Bigger than Turn On? <laughs> Not a lot of people realize another thing about Carol. He's a great humanitarian. Ah, that he doesn't really surprise is. me at all. It doesn't surprise no. you. Well, it surprised no. a lot of other people, and it says so right there. <laughs> We're like Dean. You know, we just keep going. <laughs> you, you know uh, that, that every Christmas Eve, yes. Carol O'Connor goes mm. to some of this, this city's finest restaurants, yes. orders a hundred menus... And sends them to the poor people! That, right. <laughs> right. Sends the menus to the poor people. <laughs> and then he goes back and gets more menus. Sorry, right, right. I won't give wait, up. Wait a minute. 
<laughs> do, you, do you want to talk about Easter? Oh, okay. I love Easter. Every Easter, he calls they all wouldn't... all the. <laughs> Every Easter, he calls all the children in the neighborhood yes. over to his front lawn right. for an egg roll. And uh, he lets the kids watch him eat it, right? Yeah. What are you yelling for? I don't know. I think if you're not going good, just talk higher. <laughs> Talking about you know all the all the terrible things yeah. that he says on that television show about black people. Yes. You know he, he uh, means every word. No, of it. No, 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 no. All contraire. <laughs> no, the real Carol O'Connor loves black people. Yeah. Yes, he does. He does. Uh, Next card, please. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> no, he loves black people. Yeah. And if his wife ever finds out, <laughs> no. He, and he's also always getting about the Jews. He loves black people. He, he loves, loves black people and, and he loves Jews? Uh, he must right. be crazy about Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah, well, he's... <laughs> Well, the, the thing is that no matter what he says on television, that does not truly reflect the opinion of the man himself. Because true. the man himself is really... So you should say something nice about Carol. I love Carol O'Connor. He's he one of my best friends, as a matter of fact. A man could find no better friend on earth than Carol O'Connor. Well, if you have something like that to say about some guy, don't, don't say it to the camera. Say it to the man himself. You're kidding. All right. Carol, I love you. You're just... <laughs> Yelling, weren't they? I just said that. Uh, wait, I understand they're gonna revive laughing. It should have been revived while it was on. <laughs> I'm rolling again. <laughs> you throwing up, Gene? <laughs> I would like you to meet a man who's an old friend of Carol's from 30 years ago. He and Carol used to work together as longshoremen on the docks of New York City. And we've flown him out here tonight to surprise our man of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Kowalski. You know, Mr. O'Connor was my foreman down at the shipyard, and he got the job over all the rest of us because he had the most education, he had the most experience, and he knew where to get the boss abroad. <laughs> that Mr. O'Connor is a real tough egg, boy. One night we went in a saloon, he got in an argument with a guy, and a guy takes the back of his hand and hits him and says, that's a chop from Gung Fu. And Mr. O'Connor pulls something out of his pocket, hits the guy on the head, and says, and that's a crowbar from Midas Muffler. <laughs> I'll never forget all us guys on that crew. We went to see him in that movie, Cleopatra. And the first time he walked down the screen, we said, and he said, Hail Caesar! And we said, that ain't our Mr. O'Connor. Then he started running around Rome in a funny looking robe. And we said, that ain't our Mr. O'Connor. But then all of a sudden, he turned around and stabbed his boss right in the back. And we all said, now that's our Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> quite an actor. Every week on television, he plays the part of a bigot. But in real life, he's the complete opposite. Really, take it from me. He's a man who strongly believes in equality and brotherhood. In fact, Carol's whole family has always been completely devoid of any racial prejudice. As a matter of fact, I thought you might like to see some pictures of his family. Here's a picture of his grandfather. <laughs> This 
is a picture of his grandmother. <laughs> and this is a picture of one of his children. tonight someone who was a great influence on on your early life carol it's your third grade teacher from ps 76 i know where i am from ps 76 in new york city miss elsie birdwell And, and I like to feel that I had something to do with his success in later life. Uh, I, I have something here that you might be interested in seeing. Uh, it's, it's an arithmetic problem that I gave to Carol's third grade class. And Carol was the only one who got a hundred. This was the question. A subway train pulled into a station with 93 passengers. When the doors opened, the following got off. 17 Polacks, nine Spicks, and three Jungle Bunnies. <laughs> and the following got on. 28 Hebes, 16 Krauts, 12 Chinks, five Spaghetti Benders, and a Kami Hinko Rat. <laughs> were left on the train. And here, in his own little handwriting, Carol wrote down the correct answer. There would be exactly 19 fags left. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Norm Crosby. <laughs> Carol O'Connor is absolutely nothing like the character Archie Bunker he portrays on television. Carol is an educated man, a man of stigma and depth. He comes from an upper-class family, and early in life, his father taught Carol the basic principle that has determined his entire personality. When he was seven years old, his father took him out in the backyard, made him climb a high ladder, and told him to jump. And Carol said, no, no, father, I will hurt myself. And his father said, I'm your father, and I say jump. And he jumped. Broke his hip, one arm, and both legs. And his father looked out at him and said, that's your first lesson. Don't trust nobody. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is why, to this very day, Carol O'Connor is very deceptive about all kinds of people. As a matter of fact, he has extra sensible reception. It was discovered in Europe during the Olympic Games when he was standing next to a tall, thin athlete, and Carol said, are you a pole vaulter? And the man said, no, I'm Ukrainian. <laughs> so how did you know my name was Walter? Oh. I, guess, I guess it's pretty obvious that I am here tonight to make the rest of the panel look strong. <laughs> Few people know it, and good. Few people know it. But it was the great dramatic teacher, Stanislavski, who first inspired in Carol his complete and total dedication to the theater. They were coming out of an acting class at the Abbey Theater in London. Settle down. <laughs> when an actress grabbed Stanislavski's arm and screamed, I would like to break off your arm and eat it. Another actress grabbed him by the leg and shouted, 
I would like to break off your leg and eat it. <laughs> a third actress rushed up and said, Maestro, I would like to stab you with a dagger and drink your blood. And Stanislavski turned to Carol and explained, learn, my pupil. To break off an arm and eat it, this for my pupils I would allow. To break off my leg and eat it, this too I would allow. But stick me for the drinks? <laughs> This is one of the nicest thing bats I know. Here's a surprise for you, Carol. One of your dearest pals back east wants to say a few words to you. His honor, the mayor of New York City, John Lindsay. Few people know of the invaluable contributions that Carol O'Connor has made to our city. He's helped decrease air pollution, he's assisted with our overpopulation problem, and he's contributed mightily to the establishment of better communications among groups. He's accomplished all this for New York by the simple expedient of moving to California. <laughs> but I don't feel like we've lost a great actor. I consider that we've gained a parking space. <laughs> Carol is well remembered here along Broadway in recognition of his long distinguished theatrical career. Actors' Equity plans to install a bronze star in concrete, marking his regular spot in the unemployment line. <laughs> Independent citizens groups here have indicated interest in memorializing this great actor, too. Why, just today I received a petition to erect a statue to Carol in Central Park. The pigeons have already enthusiastically endorsed the idea. <laughs> so with warm affection and admiration, I salute my buddy, Carol O'Connor. In the words of Archie himself, congratulations, meathead. <laughs> of the Carol O'Connor Fan Club. When the Supreme Court said integrate, they meant everything. <laughs> Everybody has a great ambition. We want to be singers, dancers, writers, and musicians. I just want to be a mule somewhere in the clover and catch Archie Bunker bending over. <laughs> I was talking to him before he came on and I said, what do you think about politics? Can a black man ever become president? He said, yes, if he runs against a Mexican. <laughs> that we should take our rightful place in society? He said, your rightful place is in the rhythm section of the band. <laughs> when the minorities integrated his church, he was heard to ask the question, how long can you legally hold one of these birds underwater when you're baptized? <laughs> who said that there should be no black astronauts. He said, you can't get hammocks in those little tubes you get out of. <laughs> First thing you know, the guys will be riding with the top downs and playing the radio too loud. <laughs> <laughs> and so I say to you, from all the people in all the black neighborhoods in the world, may you have a winter a cold winter with long legs and a short blanket. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Nick Russo. The KKK is going to roast Nipsey next week, and I mean roast. Greetings <laughs> from the wit and wisdom of Archie Bunker comes Mr. Gene yeah. Kelly. The 
many months to <laughs> to get these readings together. <clears throat> That's very serious. And I quote, well, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> I don't understand those race riots. You bring them blacks over here in chains, you give them jobs picking cotton, and this is the thanks you get. <laughs> so, Pollocks come by their dumbness, honestly. They're like you're out of town tourists. They go into a massage parlor and actually expect to get a massage. Now, that's not bad. <laughs> All right, little girl. I don't want to hear no more about family planning. Just mind your pills and cue. <laughs> oh. Listen, Dingbat, the movie rating system is simple as A to Z. In a G-rated movie, the hero gets the girl. In your R-rated film, the villain gets the girl. And in the X, everybody gets the girl. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thanks for that. And that's the wisdom of power. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> hey, the young man. Your parish priest, Father Michael Donahue. First of all, first of all, I would like to see you convert, Don. Give the, give the Jews a break. Dean, I never heard you sing better. I want to thank Ed Fox for coming to services last week. Now, if you're just... If you just bring back the silver candlesticks, we'd be beholden to you. <laughs> I know Carol O'Connor probably better than any other living soul. It's true. You have no lines on my cards. <laughs> if you had any talent, would we be honoring you? <laughs> Every week, we gotta help somebody with a comeback. Next week, it'll probably be Sinatra. <laughs> I hear Harold's confession every week. However, because of the seal of confession, I'm not allowed to reveal what I know. Oh, no. <laughs> if you offered me a few dollars. <laughs> I wish I could, but I cannot. I cannot tell you about Carol's experience with the albino. The whip and the bottle of wild root tuna. <laughs> uh, you can laugh, Gene. I laugh when you dance. <laughs> oh, the cockeyed dwarf he picked up one night in Laurel Canyon. <laughs> I can't even tell you about his escapade with the Eskimo princess and the antique chandelier. Although I suppose it wouldn't be breaking my vow to tell you it did cost him almost 400 Hail Marys. In fact, Carol is the only member of my parish who had to get his rosary beads recapped. Boy, that Gentile human gets big laughs, don't he? I wish I could tell you some of the things Carol has confessed to me. But the only person I can tell them to is the bishop just as the only person the bishop can tell them to is the cardinal. And the only person the cardinal can tell them to is the pope. You see, in the church, we too have to keep things all in the family. to have with us the man who actually made the decision to put all in the family on the air. 
the president of the CBS television network, Mr. Robert Wood, even though Mr. Wood is the president of a rival network, the brass here at NBC sent a large basket of fruit to his dressing room. Lucky for him, he wasn't in it when it exploded. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Wood. Thank you, Dean, and incidentally, I'd like to thank everybody uh, here at NBC. You know, uh, as Don Rickles knows, doing a comedy show is very, very difficult. <laughs> and increasingly, our audiences are becoming more and more demanding. So if a comedy show, or for that matter, even a show like yours, Dean, <laughs> should get dull, just even for a second or two, audiences instinctively defect to competing channels. So with that in mind, I'd like to start my tribute off tonight to Carol O'Connor by offering you a dramatic reading of the Czechoslovakian uh, Constitution. <laughs> I suppose this is the perfect time to say that there's a wonderful movie playing right now on CBS. <laughs> now, Carol, if you're wondering why I haven't addressed myself to you. <laughs> it crossed my mind, yes, it did. To not the biggest star on the CBS television network. Well, even NBC's not that dumb. Thank you very much. <laughs> Carol, there's a lot of your friends and admirers who couldn't be here tonight, but some of them have recorded messages on videotape and we'd like to play them for you now. Don't worry, Carol. No matter how hard they try, they'll never really roast you. With your pot, you'll never fit in the oven. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoy you on All in the Family. You know something? You're almost as good as you used to be with Art Carney and Audrey Meadows on The Honeymooners. Hey, Carol. As a fellow son of Aaron, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Thanks to your program, Americans of all ethnic backgrounds, Poles, Germans, Blacks, Jews, Italians, Puerto Ricans, are all united now with one common purpose, to get the Irish. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Gene Stapleton and Sally Struthers asked me to tell you they're terribly sorry, but they can't be with you tonight. But they were invited to an orgy at Norman Lear's house. <laughs> Hello, Carol. My sisters and I were watching your program last week, and we thought you looked very familiar. Tell me, darling, were you ever married to one of us? <laughs> Carol O'Connor, how much do I owe thee? I want the whole world to know that you're the man responsible for what I am today. Pregnant. <laughs> and now, Carol, here to pay tribute to you is the very distinguished senator from the state of Arizona, ladies and gentlemen, Senator Barry Goldwater. Thank you, Dean, and members of the dais. Carol, I've never heard so many nasty things said about a man who wasn't running for anything. <laughs> Actually, your Archie Bunker character might have a great career in politics. He's in the middle of the road. That is, a little to the left of Attila the Hun. <laughs> And just a bit to the right of Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> Archie Bunker's distinctive way of speaking would be an enormous asset in politics. He already sounds like he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. <laughs> and 
Carroll O'Connor himself has some of the outstanding qualities of our greatest statesmen, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Richard Nixon. <laughs> that is to say, he has bad teeth. <laughs> His clothes don't fit, <laughs> and he has to shave three times a day. <laughs> but, Carol, I'd like to thank your Archie Bunker for his support in my last campaign. And I want you to know that I'm still optimistic. There's always an opening for someone with presidential aspirations. If not here, uh, then in South America. <laughs> uh, Cass Elliott is truly a great entertainer. I love that girl. I wouldn't say she's fat, but from the front, she looks like Carol O'Connor from the back. <laughs> Holy kid, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Miss Cass Elliott. might have noticed that I'm the only woman on this dais. They invited other women, but I'm the only one that showed up. <laughs> Frankly, Carol, yeah. the women of America are fed up. You've insulted, ridiculed, and demeaned our sex every week on your show, and All in the Family is supposed to be the show that champions civil rights. You big phony. Only once, only once did you ever open the car door for Edith, and you were going 60 on the freeway. <laughs> In all the years you've been married to Edith, you never took her anywhere except to the hospital to have the baby, and you made her drive. <laughs> You're nothing but a male chauvinist. You never dress for dinner. You always come to the dinner table in your T-shirt. Couldn't you put on your shorts? <laughs> so, Carol, tonight, on behalf of the women everywhere, yes, I would like to present you with right. the first annual Male Chauvinist Pig Award. And here it is, the pig. Oh. Thank you, Cass. The other night. Will you please tell the president of CBS if he don't keep his hand out of my peanuts, I'll kill him? <laughs> the other night I called I called Red Fox and I said, We're roasting Carol O'Connor. Would you like to come? He said, I'd be delighted. I'll even bring the matches. <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight with uh, someone who is also not a credit to his race. <laughs> Contrary to what you have been, been believing in your lifetime, because you wanted to be fair, niggas do care nice. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Dean. You know, Carol O'Connor and I have slightly different backgrounds. His weighs about 35 pounds more than mine. <laughs> However, though, I'm just serious. I'm very fond of Carol personally, and I have a great respect for him as an actor. And so I'd like to take this opportunity to deny a false and very vicious rumor that's been going around about Carol. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to personally assure you no matter what you have heard, Carol O'Connor is not gay. I killed all my dates for next week. Who is that? I, I, I'm black, but I got some nigger friends up there. <laughs> Carol is strictly a man's man. Oh, wait a minute, let me rephrase that. <laughs> what I mean is, Carol is 100% masculine. 
I had it on sworn, solemn word of the producer of his show, Norman Queer, a Lear. <laughs> See, you must assume that a man is in any way effeminate just because he happens to have a girl's name. Uh, you know what I mean, Gene? Yeah, I do. <laughs> It's terrible the way these stories get started. Apparently, what happened was, see, Carol was doing a show a few years back with Liberace. And one day, they were just sitting around rehearsal, and Liberace offered Carol an apple. And uh, Liberace said, and Carol said, yes. And that's how the rumor was born. So I want to assure you, to you all. I got to take that out. Uh, we go back over it because I only say like you all. It's, I want to assure all of you. <laughs> that Carl O'Connor is a fine and generous man. Who would give you the skirt off, I mean the shirt off his back. He's a wonderful person, terrific actor. He can play comedy and he can play drama. He goes both ways. I learned that. Let me rephrase that. Uh, man, it's good. I better go and sit down. Thanks an awful lot. Yes. Thanks, Greg. Well, I don't know what can follow that except Don Rickles. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Don Rickles. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, <laughs> first to start off with, Red Fox, you're a black man and you're a credit to your race. Black or white, it doesn't matter to me as long as you don't try to hang around with me. <laughs> Right off the bat, now Red knows. Now, hey, baby, the chairman is in charge. <laughs> the chairman of the Moose Hall is in charge. When the black man wants to stand, he will ask the Jew with courtesy. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. The black men, you can see by the seating, their position. <laughs> Why are we getting into a race riot while we're doing a show here? I, the whole audience in the back is going, they're going to be a race riot. Come on, Leroy, let's get in our car and run over a few people. I'm just trying to be entertaining, and it turned out to be a race. Sit down, you Italian. Gene Kelly just stood up. God bless him. He's a wonderful guy. But singing in the rain is over. Oh, Gene's a great man. 92 to stand with Frank Sinatra and go, sing in the rain. You people see it on camera as I talk to you, and then they go backstage and go, Aah! I'm singing in the rain. And Frank keeps going, is the heart working? Is the heart working? Gene, I say to you honestly, and first, I will just say, these are Carol O'Connor's closest friends. <laughs> <laughs> Carol O'Connor met these people in my trailer an hour ago <laughs> and said, you really like me? <laughs> but Bob Wood, the president of CBS, came here tonight to honor Carol O'Connor. I had hoped a representative, whether it be Dave Tebbett, my dear friend, who couldn't be in here tonight, unfortunately. He's in Greece for their annual Golden Water Festival. <laughs> We got one farmer here from Elko, Nevada, going to Golden War Festival. I'll make you feel at home, sir. No. <laughs> Dean, from the bottom of my heart, God has been good to you. God has been good to me, but he's been better to you. <laughs> Tonight, we are really getting down to the nitty-gritty. Carol, 
I tell you, Carol O'Connor, from the bottom of my heart, everything you do on the camera is a lot of baloney. Socially, you have said many times about the Jews, the blacks, the whites, the Puerto Ricans, the Mexicans, that you were fed up with the world. <laughs> and you feel you should have a crown and rule the world. And I go along with that because with your money, I need you desperately. I mean that. But his great words is Carol, as a graduate of Phi Beta Kappa from Dublin University, from Wyoming University, said to me, if thy love thyself, thy love thee. Thy know thith, thith thy know. And my lovely wife said, he's brilliant. And now my wife is in a state hospital sitting in a hot tub with a duck. I would like you to know also that there are many guests that they have honored. This has been the longest night I've ever had in my life. You know, one of the most important elements in any star's success is public relations. We are very pleased to have with us tonight Carol O'Connor's PR man. He's one of the biggest PRs in Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you all please welcome Mr. Foster Brooks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Martini. <laughs> Many people wonder exactly what, serv what, ser what services our public relations man provides to the, st to the, st to the star. <laughs> my duties are, are threefold. First, it is my job to, to cre create... <laughs> It's my job to create a public Im Im image. <laughs> image for the star. And second, I have to see that the star constantly receives favorable favor 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 mention in the prayer, in the prayer. And thirdly, I must see that he has plenty of rods on the road. <laughs> With Carol, the most difficult part of my job is convincing people that he is not like the character he plays in all, all in the family. People are always confusing Carol Bunker with Archie O'Connell. <laughs> but of course, they're totally diff different personalities. Archie is a right winger. And in the last election, Carol was McGovern's man. At least until Eleanor McGovern made him break it up. <laughs> people are always mixing up Carol and Archie. They think Carol hates people just because they're black. And that's not true at all. I was at Carol's house one night last week, and he had two black people for dinner. And they were delicious. <laughs> you know, it, it's a one, wonderful experience working for Carol. His, his, his success hasn't cha changed him at all. <laughs> He's still the same obnoxious slob he always was. <laughs> Well, oh, excuse me, at that time I put in an L. <laughs> yes, friends, even though Carol is now a superstar, super he never forgets the little people. In fact, right at this moment, he's paying the rent for three midget go-go dancers. <laughs> Carol's just a regular guy. If you didn't know who he was, 
you'd never guess that he was a celebrity. <laughs> Unless you happen to see the, see the star-shaped John in his dressing room. <laughs> That's where he twinkles. The press is always asking embarrassing questions of me about Carol. They keep asking, what does, Car what does Carol make? And I tell them anything that walks. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, I wish I could tell you just how the rest of the All in the Family cast feels about Car Carol O'Connor. I wish I could tell you how Bob, Bob Reiner feels about Carol O'Connor. I wish I could tell you how uh, Sally Str Struthers feels about Carol O'Connor and how Gene St Stapleton feels about Carol O'Connor. None of them is here tonight. <laughs> so I guess I just told you how they feel about Carol O'Connor. Our man of the week, our number one guy with the number one show, Mr. Carol O'Connor. Thank you, Dean. What an extraordinary group. <laughs> Red Fox said to me, these people look like passengers in a Fred McMurray bus commercial. <laughs> I didn't like to correct Red about that, but he really doesn't know much about the subject of buses. Way back when Red was riding buses, he only saw the last three rows. <laughs> I want particularly to thank Mayor John Lindsay of New York for taking... <laughs> They're taking time out from job hunting <laughs> to say a few words for me. The mayor assumed office about the time Dean Martin started his television show. The difference is when the mayor stopped being a hit, he gave up. <laughs> gracious Senator Goldwater to fly in from Washington to be here. The Senate has been very busy working on a plan to get Arizona out of the United Nations. <laughs> friend Mike Thomas from the Madden Show is here. How Mike loves his producer for giving him all that action in his scripts. You know, someone is always trying to run over Mike with a car. What Mike doesn't know is that his producer wants to do a variety show with Rickles. <laughs> of course, Rickles can't do that. He's not available because Rickles has a contract with Bob Wood to do four unsold pilots <laughs> every year. <laughs> Wonder to see Bob Wood, president of CBS, here. Well, Bob got the top job at CBS shortly after he staged the break-in at Jim Aubrey's psychiatrist's office. <laughs> and my good friend Dick Martin sitting here, well, you know, he's married to this beautiful young little English girl, sweet, light-hearted, loves everything about America. No, as we say, putting on the dog for this girl. Dick bought her a $35,000 Stutz automobile. She traded it in for a Honda and a case of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Well, that's our show for tonight. I want to thank my wonderful guests for being with me and uh, not so wonderful ones, too. I especially want to thank Carol O'Connor for joining in the fun. I don't think it can be said too often that Carol O'Connor is not at all like Archie Bunker. Carol does all he can to help minorities. He wouldn't think of letting a white man shine his shoes. <laughs> Good night. Everybody, on the way home, Catherine, warm up to hot chocolate.